everybody, everybody and welcome, welcome to Artist Wife, Writer Husband. It's your girl, Mitty. And it's your boy, Neff. And uh, we got some fun topics today, right, Neff? Yep, and we're also here today with... Oh, I thought I was being introduced. MDC. <laughs> Our homie. <laughs> Our Jeez. homie, MDC. Just the director friend, y'all. Director y'all friend. Who it is. Yeah. Make yeah. sure some... don't forget about me considering we recorded my house. <laughs> yeah, it's three of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like the setup. I like three. <laughs> Featuring. Trios. So, um. Three way. It's tree. No. Three of us. <laughs> Just so the we, three of us. Uh, what are we talking about today, Neff? Yeah, um, I guess the first thing we're going to get in is... Let's get right into it. Ghostbusters. Who? Now, this is what I'm curious about, because I have no idea why you guys want to bring this up. Okay, so you've seen Ghostbusters, right? Yeah. One, two, you know, mm-hmm. big staples to American society. Yeah, I think I remember overheard a conversation about the marshmallow. Buster makes me feel good. What's the, the <laughs> marshmallow man's name again? The marshmallow man? No, 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 it didn't... Well, what was the company he was... No, 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 it was supposed to be a play on the Pillsbury Doughboy. That's what I always think about. Pillsbury Doughboy always throws me off. Oh, oh, oh. Um. So, no, yeah, I, 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 well, yeah, I, I mean, I know I know both of what you're talking about. It's just, I don't... They don't seem like they line up? I don't think, I don't think that was the point. I, I'm not oh, sure. okay, I always thought that was the case. I was either say Marshmallow Man or Pillsbury Doughboy, but the Pillsbury Doughboy is the real one. But, yeah, Neff, what, what's what's... Okay, this well, it was actually brought to my attention by um, MDC. He was saying um, that they're planning to do Ghostbusters 3. With that being said... Um, Wait, like skipping over the remake that just happened? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have, We're just going to okay. skip over it? <laughs> so to put it out there, has anyone seen the remake? No. No, not really. With um the, the all-women's cast. All-women's cast. Now, see, here's the weird thing to me. Well, okay, so he was telling me that Leslie Jones, um, the actress from SNL. I like her. She was very much upset about this. Now, here's the weird thing, because I always thought that the initial plan, when I heard of that they was making Ghostbusters, that they were supposed to have been uh, all-female Ghostbusters, which came out, and it's supposed to have been an all-male Ghostbusters. Right, you they were like so just dumb. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it sounded weird to me, but I was like, well, okay, if they're saying that's how it's going to be, that's just how it's going to be. Right, and they were going to like continue the lines, but branching, right? Yeah. Yeah, like it was well, going to be all I don't, female. I don't, I don't know if they was going to continue it, but hey, that's just what they said, and I just accepted it. Yeah. But um, apparently, they're supposed to be. Is this would technically be Ghostbusters three because it's breaking back the Ghostbusters cast with the minus of... Uh, Hell Ramis. Because he passed away, right? Crazy, because Bill Murray has been putting this movie off forever. Yeah. Now he's dead, and now they're going to do it? Well, yeah, that is confusing, because it's like, why? <laughs> this is my main... Cause I, okay, from what I heard, the all-female cast wasn't horrible, but it wasn't... I thought it, I heard it was like right. one of the worst movies that came out that year. Wow! Well, it had like the worst trailer of that year. That was a pretty bad trailer, to be honest. It was yeah. really. But I heard I'm, it wasn't terrible. I, when people came from the theaters, they were like, "Eh, I'm I'm okay with it." Now, see, let me, let me, let me let me explain my whole issue with that movie. Now, of course, this movie had like split controversy. You had some people that are just yeah. sexist bastards, so yeah, screw them. So. Yeah, but, it, you can't really bring up the movie without mentioning them because a lot yeah. of people was just hating it because Purely. of the fact that it was an all-female Ghostbusters. Now, that being said, though, see, uh, now here's the issue because, so... There was a few things. Like, okay, so the original, the fans of the original ones, a lot of them were upset because they just didn't feel like that same chemistry would exist, which is understandable. I get that. Yeah. Because, you know, when you read, you know, the, the, the guys in the first movies really made that movie, so it's completely understandable. Yeah. Even, even if it was an all-male cast, I think if it wasn't the original guys, people probably would have had the same reaction. Oh, yeah. actual fans anyway. Yeah, the actual fans. Like, you know, because it's like remakes will have the chemistry. Yeah. That's literally the question. And so, and now, so now let's, let's talk about this so-called progressive movie because this is my big issue. I'm like, listen, people, 
you know, I, I really wish when it comes to getting, you know, mo- movies that are representing people, we need to remember that we can demand more than what we're getting. I don't yeah. understand why we keep settling for things because so many people were excited. Hey, look, it's an all female Ghostbusters. This, Ghostbusters. This is so progressive. I'm thinking, yeah, progressive in the sense that. Three of the teammates or team players are still white women. Yeah. And the one black one is the only one that's not a scientist. Now so see, that was my issue with it too, was that I as as a as a woman, I get the whole I mean, as a black woman, as an Afro Latina black you know, woman, I get the whole I, I don't I'm not fond of the race swapping, gender swapping. Oh, we're giving you guys something new. It's just a gender swap. Oh, okay. Oh, we're giving you guys something new. It's just a race swap. Well, okay, but there's probably a... Bit. Okay, so what was the point of this? And I see those people that are caping for the movie because it's women. I'm yeah. not saying that's a terrible, bad thing, but at the same I mean, time, you like gotta I said, see I, the... I never watched it, but like definitely hearing that from that point of view, like they weren't doing anything different. Yeah. It was like, okay, we're taking comedian women and um, we're literally taking, like how you said, three white women, one black... And we're going to put them in the Ghostbusters world. And when you say it like that, it was probably kind of doomed to fail because they weren't trying to do anything more so different from outside of what we were, you know, used yeah. to. Or at least better. But then, yeah, or, or better or whatnot. And like, it, probably even going, probably a little bit more serious or choosing an entirely different style. And, Not saying that I had anything wrong with any of the. The women, yeah. I think I only really know two of them. Um, but uh, I, I just want to—I wanted to say uh, what Leslie Jones had to say. Uh, read her Twitter message, uh, her tweet. So she mm-hmm. was like, "So insulting, like fuck us. We didn't count. It's like something Trump would do. Trump force. Going to redo Ghostbusters. Better with men will be huge. Those women <laughs> ain't Ghostbusters." Sorry, my Trump impersonation is horrible. Uh, uh, can, can any impersonation of Trump be more horrible? What than... gotta do? That's pretty bad too. You gotta do the hand <laughs> like, movements. Like go it's to hard. Redo Ghostbusters. Uh, Bigly. I, 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 it's gotta be huge. It's gotta Bigly. be huge. You gotta do like the little like kind of voice. Ghostbusters. Build a wall. Like, build know, the like wall. Give her Garfield. Build the wall around um, the Ghostbusters <laughs> female <laughs> version. <laughs> and then she went on to Wait. say. Um, uh, so annoying, such a dick move, and I don't give fuck. I'm saying something. I don't give a fuck. I'm saying something. And um, I feel like she was feeling, to be honest, like they're just yeah. like, wow. So our Ghostbusters movie that you guys asked us to be in, you're just gonna skip right over it. Like you're like, fuck it. See, but that happens so often. And, and too. here's here's the thing. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that she's not wrong. She she really isn't. I I get where she's coming from. Yeah, I do too. But it's just like at the same time, I feel like this this whole thing with Ghostbusters is just a no win situation at this point. Because it's yeah. like, you know, what I'm really hating that I'm seeing with movies and a lot of things is that let, let's kind of like with DCEU. You know, it's like oh. those movies were doomed to fail from the beginning. I mean, I'm hearing good about Aquaman. It'll probably be like the last good thing they do. I'm pessimistic, so deal with it. Um, <laughs> but. You know, I'm seeing this. A lot of money is getting thrown at things that are pretty much meant to fail, and it's like all it does is grow resentment because yeah. essentially, with this new ghost, let's just say this new Ghostbusters with the with the old crew is actually pretty good. That'll just make the the female one worse, and just gives more reason for them not to give women roles like that. Yeah, even though that wasn't even the reason that movie failed. Right. So what I would have done instead of going straight into just like, okay, screw it, we're just going to go with guys, I would have did a second female version, but probably hi- maybe figure out the writings, figure out what we did wrong, and make it better. This would... With t- the same cast of the, the women. See, this would, this, would, this is where I'm going to become a 90s kid again. See, one thing I was in love with in the 90s was Go- Ghostbusters Extreme. And I know a lot of people don't remember this. Nope. It that was, was the cartoon, right? Hold on a yeah, it was the cartoon. Yeah, and, I remember. And I'm not going to say it's the most diverse thing back in the day but what I will tell you is that you had a you had a black character you had a goth woman you had a guy in oh, a wheelchair yeah, yeah, yeah. and another person I don't remember but those are the three I remember and it's like to me why not just instead of just doing gender swap why don't you just mix it up like just have okay maybe three women and one yeah. male or 
two women, two men. Like, mix yeah. it up. Because when you but, just swap it, it just seems so... The 90s Oops. diversity was awesome. Like, 90s, they didn't even think about diversity sometimes. It looks like they just was just like... It was natural. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it felt natural, natural yeah. in the late 90s. To, to tell you the truth, I think I had a dream. Like, um... Oh, shit, Nip prophecies. I had, I had a dream <laughs> where it was like I was like a Ghostbuster, but not really. Um, And I was like, yo, like, Ghostbusters could really work if it was like reality. Like, um, like imagine it like kind of like a reality TV series, like kind of similar to um, uh, Ghost Hunters. Yeah, that but you been... know, it just has like that awkwardness of like The Office or something <laughs> yeah, like exactly. that, or like a show like that. And you know, I had the idea too. I'm like, why didn't they just make it a series? Just have all. It's like to me, Ghostbusters by now should be successful enough. There's like thousands of people that are signed up now. Yeah, the there world. are so many things like, that you can do with ghosts. Like that, the cartoon touched upon. Exactly. You know, um, uh, they went both Lovecraft one time. Both of them, and I remember one time they had like these weird looking aliens. <laughs> oh, that was the conversation we had the other day with uh, Jeff, where because you had said that basically the all the spirits, all of them, they weren't ghosts. They were basically like evil spirits, right? Yeah, they look like freaking demons and crap. Like demons. <laughs> yeah, that was the confusing part. Cause what was um oh god I don't remember his name, what was his name, the main ghost from like the cartoon? Oh, you talking about Slimer? Slimer. Yeah, I was yeah, gonna Slimer. call him um Splunge or something. Splunge. I don't know. <laughs> wow. I don't Splunge. Know <laughs> yeah, like I'm sorry, I, I don't remember his backstory. If he ever did, he ever get one? Like, I, I, I don't see. That's the other thing about this whole Ghostbusters thing. It's like you know, I had to ask myself. I'm like. Do I really care? Am I really that big of a fan of Ghostbusters, to be honest? Yeah, that's... I yeah, mean, I'm like, who's accent for this? I mean, like, as a kid, I loved watching the cartoons. I, I loved the movies. Yeah, it's like... I, I showed the kids I, I, the I movies. like it like anyone else, but it's like... It's not something... If we never get another Ghostbusters movie, I would not be upset about that. This is not I, the hill I die on. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm down for another, like, a, a female cast... Uh, Ghostbusters 2. Why, why not put them both in the movie together? I'm, or I'm why like... not put the? Why does it have to be just four Ghostbusters? Why can't there be like a section like a? Didn't one well, of them do that? Well, that's what me and him just said. Like, oh, shit. just have a whole. Why? Yeah, it's like to me, Ghostbusters ought to be like you know worldwide by at this point. Yeah. Like, yeah. When you're talking not... about the Ghost Hunters thing, Ghost Hunters is pretty. Is, is a funny version, but I wouldn't mind watching it in a reality TV sense, like you know, like a mockumentary kind of. Mocking reality. Well, reality TV is not. Actually well, I, I get what you're saying, though. We're, yeah, you don't know what I'm saying. You know, that's what I, I, don't, s- I don't. watch enough TV. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I've stopped. <laughs> Apparently, they said Slimer was like the ghost of John of uh, John Belushi. <laughs> well, <laughs> wow, that's dark. What? <laughs> He's the one that died, right? The fifth Ghostbuster. No, Ghostbuster like, is our fifth. No, Ghostbuster? the comedian, because you you know all these people are from SNL. So, yeah, I think John Belushi is yeah, the one. Yeah, John that. Belushi was an American comedian, actor, and singer. Uh, Belushi is best known for his intense energy and uh, raucous attitude, which he displayed. Yeah, he was on Saturday Night Live. Wow. Yeah, he died. Yeah. I think, wow. Yeah, in 1982. Yes. Wow. That, yeah, that's... <laughs> that pretty much ties in, yeah. Yeah, like, he, he they said this in, like, multiple interviews. Uh, Dan Aykroyd said it. Wow, that that's news to me. Okay, but wait, just correct me. There was at one point five Ghostbusters, right? Mm, Wasn't no. there? I remember. I think well, talking about in the that second dude. movie. She's thinking of a uh, that suited up. Remember the the one from Honey I Shrank the Kids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. Guy, his name. But he was never an official Ghostbuster, right? Technically, no. Why do yeah. I know his name? I should know his name. Like I love his movies. I don't. I have no idea what he's doing now. Apparently, he. I think I heard he's coming back for the new movie too. I'm like, wow, really? Wow, really? Yeah. His name is actually the Onion Head Ghost. Rick Moranis. Wow. Rick oh, wait, Mor- yeah, oh, you're right. Is his name Wayne Selensky? No, it's Rick Mor- Moranis. Oh, I see. That was just yeah. a, that guy looks so dejected. <laughs> yeah, Rick Moranis. What are you doing now, Rick? What are you? Yes, oh, retired because from Hollywood. His- Wife passed away. He he wanted oh. to take care of his, his children. Kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he was oh, actually he was like a staple in like the nineties, like nineties. Yeah, I thought it was like the early nineties films. Yeah, yeah, eighties yeah, too. Yeah, he was the parent. Like, bro, he was the geeky brother. scientist. 
has a baby, like his favorite movie was oh, uh, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. Oh, like, you yeah. blew always up? just stop and Never watch saw it. that one? Blew up? <laughs> yeah, that's when, that's like. That's the second one? No, that's the first one. What, really? Yeah, yeah. instead of shrinking the baby, the baby got larger. Oh, okay. When you say blow when... up, well, I'm thinking, like, well, I mean, but this is the eight. I but mean, that's your is... dark mind. I mean, <laughs> this is the 80s, though. Come on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> understandable because, this is like, the 80s. MDC literally has a film over here called that she saw recently like what, what is it called is oh it right here? who is can kill it? a child yeah. yeah who can kill a child that's what so i'm like I, oh yeah totally and that has nothing to do with our conversation oh he was barney rubble i forgot Oh, yeah, Wait, who was Barney Rubble? Um, Rick Moranis from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. In the Kid. Flintstones movie. In the Flintstones In the first movie. one? Yeah. Yeah, the 1990, oh, God, where is it, 1994, yeah. I do not, re- hold on, I have to search that. I do not remember him being Barney Rubble. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, because he doesn't I look the, the same kid. because he has blonde hair and no glasses. Yeah, that's true. Wow, he was also in Rudolph. Oh, yeah, but yeah, what? this has nothing to do with our subject, man, but. He was in <laughs> Brother Bear? Yeah, right, I'm done. Hush. <laughs> 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 but, um. Yeah, Who Can Kill a Child? I'm going to just recommend that for you dark film watchers because I'm going to just say this. It's the best child killer movie out there. I'm a little scared, though, to be honest. Oh, I don't know crap. if you're promoting children yeah, killing movies. Yeah, that does look like him, though. Wow. So, yeah. Right? Um, yeah, so if you like Children of the Corn, this is like 100 times better because Children of the Corn has not aged well unless you're talking about the third one. Really? It hasn't? It has not aged well. Oh, wow. That's interesting, thanks. I'm Should they have remake to it? recast that. Um... They Let's already, talk about they remakes. Actually already did. What? No, they, dude. I don't know. I believe you and everything that you because yeah, I, I movie, don't know why you're questioning me. I don't know why I'm questioning yeah. the movie fanatic. Yeah, the film the, the fanatic. The filmmaker and the film. Yeah, the <laughs> film friend. The guy who has a movie. We just brought up a movie ain't nobody ever heard of. Like, That's who true. you questioning? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking it up though because I don't know. Oh wait, no. I mean, it, it wasn't. One. It didn't. It didn't hit theaters. You know, I I only know about because oh, I was it's on, a television film. Yeah. Oh, Straight okay. Straight to TV. Yeah, it came out two thousand and nine. Yep. Based on the the nineteen seventy seven short story of the same name by Stephen King. I love Stephen King. Who doesn't? I mean, people that don't like him. People that I actually I met a lot of people that people. don't like um, horror movies. Well, so that's understandable. Yeah, yes. All yeah, right. and those people are wrong. So, <laughs> ah, screw it. I'm about to kill this. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> anything more on Ghostbusters? We can move to the rest of the remakes. Remakes. Yeah, we can move along because yeah. Revenge of the remakes. I kind of want that to have like a kind of zombie <laughs> thing. You I'm know, sorry. Like dripping. Would that be blood. like continuing this? Because I know this was about the movie. Well, the, this technically isn't a remake. Okay, this is just a sequel. A very, very long waited. Sequel. Yeah, like, now yeah. seriously yeah. pointless. Yeah. Also, Bill Murray doesn't really look like he aged well. I just I don't, had to put that out there. Sorry, he kind of did <laughs> it. I don't know how I felt about him in Jungle Book. I mean, I kind of hey, did. Hey, hey, hey. Kinda. Film magic. I didn't like. Film magic. I didn't like him singing in Jungle Book, and nor did I like. Uh, no, no, it was just his singing. Cause yeah, because I, I felt like he uh, totally. Walker. Yeah, I, I felt like it. he totally wrecked um, Bare Necessities. Hold on, did you Dang. say Christopher Walker? Christopher Walker? Walking. Walking? Walk-in, oh, yes. sorry. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so used to Walker. Walking doesn't seem like someone's last name. <laughs> Christopher Walking. Okay, where's he walking Texas, to? Texas, Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop making fun. <laughs> sorry. Don't walking. <laughs> I love them as the... Ju- okay, we're not talking about Jungle Book right now. That's a remake. Oh, uh, can you consider animated films into live action films remakes? If a, if Wait, it wasn't fully redone. live action. It was like a lot of three D animation. It was too. all three D <laughs> minus yeah, Mowgli. Yeah. Can we can we not call three D movies live action? They are not live action. You're They're right. 3D. They're C- yeah, the 3D, <laughs> CGI. CGI. Movies. Yeah, technically, it's still all animated. Yeah. So well, except for Mowgli. Yeah. Mowgli. 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 Mm-hmm. Mowgli. Um, I want to talk about. Boy, you look like a Mowgli. Let's <laughs> talk. <laughs> <Stop. laughs> that sounds funny when you say it. Mowgli. Mowgli. Let's <laughs> kill me not. Kill me not. Mowgli look like that type of child you've already abandoned in the woods. Oh. I'm gonna sorry. jump from film. Okay. I'm wow. I'm gonna leave that one I'm there. Joking. I'm gonna jump from film to video Does that games. That might be like a real name. Uh, it is a real name. It is. Yeah. Oh. It's actually a name that's used. I'm sorry. I mean, not too often though, so it's, it's more traditionalish. Um, oh, okay. Hey, guys. Kingdom Hearts drops in, like, nine days. I have... I need to f- beat uh, Kingdom Hearts 2. I need to play Kingdom Hearts 1. <laughs> <laughs> I love Kingdom Hearts. Oh, uh, yo. 
even if I didn't, okay, I'm not going to lie. The storyline, at first, it was convoluted until I talked to more of my KH friends, Kingdom Hearts buddies, and they were like, yeah, they've consistently, yo, Neff broke it down. They have consistently given us um, canon games constantly. Every one of their games is canon. Chain of Memories, Rechain of Memories, Recoded, um, Birth by Sleep. I'm not going to go too much into it because, you know, you guys aren't really, but, you know, 365 and a half, 37, 2,800 days. I really hate reciting that title. Wait, Dream that's the distance. actual title? I thought you was being dumb at one point. No, that's it. I thought you were just exaggerating, like, how long it's been taking to come out. No, <laughs> it's Kingdom Hearts 380... 385.2 days. That's a real good Wait a minute, wait, 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 hold on. So you mean to tell me it was a Kingdom Hearts 3 before there was a Kingdom Hearts 3? Yeah, you mean if you want to put the was, 3 there, there a, yeah. Kingdom Hearts 358 and, and a half. Hold Is it on. an a half? Wait, Is wait, it a man. half? I feel like that's a half. Oh, so confused. Do I have I played that one? No, do I. We, do we have it? No, because oh, okay. it was like, <laughs> for some reason, Square Enix was like, let's put this on the PS Vita, let's put this on the the DS, let's put this on the game, or um, let's put this on the the 3DS, and it, and then probably other things too. Let's put this on the phone. But mobile games, those are canon. Those mobile games are canon. I feel All of like canon is the story, and it's like I feel like when you do something like that, you risk hurting the integrity. Of the franchise, but the fan base is strong. I think right. I mean, so I'm I see like fan. the logic behind it because it's literally like, hey, we got like another Kingdom Hearts game. <laughs> it's not Kingdom Hearts three. So when people are behind the alley, <laughs> it will definitely have people wanting to br- buy your consoles just for that game alone. Yeah, I was like, this close to getting a PS Vita. If I really like felt game. like that, what heavy for the franchise, that would have been me too. Yeah, I oh, got the not? DS games. I didn't do the PS Vita, but I got the DS games because I wanted to know. But it was all out of order. Yeah, shout out the PS Vita, man. It's still that's pretty. It's still it's, a pretty it's, solid it's, console. I mean, a uh, handheld. I, I don't know if it's solid, but I mean, it still well, exists. It I felt still like it exists. was. A lot of people still like it. It was still a pretty solid console. I don't know sales wise. I mean, it's the it's the first handheld console to not have cartridges. So yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. It had CDs or, or ROMs. What do we call them? No, it doesn't have it doesn't have anything. Oh, it, you just okay. download everything from online. Wow, dude! I never had a Vita. You can tell, but I hear a lot of good things about it. people are still selling Vitas. Like I would, to be honest with you, I would get one. I would like one I because like I had a PSP, and I'm like one of those people that likes to keep everything and you know, to collect everything. PSP, yeah. And our our uh. Our friend, he actually like ended up breaking it. Like that, John. <laughs> and he gave it back to me. It literally fell apart. Jeez. And I always wanted to replace it. Like I want to replace that. I want to replace my PS2. So I don't know. I might get a PS Vita. Who knows? Or at least like that generation <laughs> PSP. Yeah, it was PS. I don't. I don't remember exactly. I know that they by them chopping up the the all these canon stories to different consoles. Did screw it up a bit for me and a bit for other people. But they corrected themselves by having 1.5, 2.5, 2.8, X, I think. So it was like, they were like, here's basically for the PlayStation Xbox One. Here's the entire storyline. Not in order still, but in order of um, publishing or what would you say? Like release date. All the games are in order of release date on these, um, these, these uh, for PS4 and Xbox One. Or well, are you saying, like, in the sense of if you were in Japan, then you got it in order? Yeah, I but think. when it was, like, when it came out here, it yes. got it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I mean, we and we yeah, have 1.5 and 2.5. Do we have 2.8? I do not know. I know I, that uh, when... Uh, I know we had got, like, the PS4 versions that came out. Yeah, it was so... It was nice to have it all in one console. Yeah, we still that was, need to play that. We're going to play it, because he hasn't played... Um, well, you haven't played haven't one finished two. two, and I've, I've also one. blamed. I also blame that. Ah, uh, okay, blame is such a hard word, but <laughs> the reason I was so excited when Kingdom Hearts two came out, like yeah, I immediately yeah. got it that first week. I was playing it, and then my friend, the same friend who broke my PSP, <laughs> uh, was like, "Hey, yo, let me borrow it for oh, the weekend." Yeah. And I'm like, knowing how I am, and I literally had like that, you know, teenage mentality where it's like if this is gone for more than like yeah 
like two days, I'm not going to want to play it anymore. And he's like, uh, no, 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 you can get it back Monday when I see you in school. <laughs> I did not get that back in like two weeks. And by the time I got it back, I, my memory card somehow got corrupted. And uh. I was like, I'm not going through that prologue again. Yo, guys, like memory that, cards. That first part Six was hours. so freaking long. If you're and lucky, then it was you like, can narrow it down to five you get four through hours it, and 55 minutes. And you're just like, you know, waiting for the next level. And it's like Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> and it was like, what? The game hasn't even started yet? <laughs> Bruh. Oh, um, my goodness. Yeah. I beat the ending, and I played the game several times. I pretty much know the stories one or two back to back. But at the time, when Kingdom Hearts 2 came out, I didn't fully... I was playing Reach, I was playing Chain of Memories on the DS. I didn't... I knew that this lined up, but, I mean, I didn't know at the time that this was concrete, for sure, backstory. And then backstory started flooding us, and I'm just like... So are you telling me that there's backstory outside of the main console games? Because in my head, I'm thinking the main consoles are the backstory. And then everything that comes off are just spin off, play on the world or whatnot. You know, little fun play things. No, it's all concrete. You better remember everything. And I, so before the game comes out in nine days, on the 29th, yes, I'm getting it. Yes, I'm pre-ordering the limited edition. I don't care how late it is. I'm doing it now. <laughs> and I'll be playing it. Um, I want Neff to play it because, I, I mean, I want to relive it. Because you can spend a lot of time on the island. I, Me and my brother, we would sit there and be on the island in the first game until we were, like, level six. And then decide to leave and just mollywop everything. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. But it's, that's been, like, at least Grinding. more than ten years. You remember that time the Invisible Woman got mollywopped? <laughs> what? Hold on, what? Is that, that's... Oh, oh. He's bringing up a time we was playing uh, Marvel Alliance. <laughs> Is Invisible Woman With the friend the... that broke the PS Vita? Yeah, that broke the that broke the PSP, PSP. and kept my uh, Kingdom Hearts two for like two extra weeks. Um, yeah, he was Wonder Woman and like no, he was Invisible Woman. Yeah, yeah, Invisible Woman. Sorry, he was Invisible Woman, and like next thing we looked at him, like we was doing this uh, boss battle, and next thing we look at him, it was like Invisible Woman just like laid out. <laughs> like I it wouldn't was, mind it was a crazy. remake of that. It was crazy. Video uh, game remakes yeah, aren't it, so bad. It was it was Maybe. funny because I saw I saw him, I saw Invisible Woman land there like suddenly after everyone else you know, put all their blood, sweat, and tears into beating that boss. And I just <laughs> said like, damn, someone just punched the shit out of just freaking <laughs> Invisible Woman. Like the hell happened? It's like I feel like someone just saw her turn invisible, and just punched the crap out of her, and that was it. <laughs> right. I'm like, of course it would happen to the person that was playing with her, you know. I'm not you know, and they constantly talk about wanting a remake of the Ultimate Alliance. And that this yeah. thing came out recently, but I don't think it did too. Or it just didn't get the I'm buzz. Sure. I know that that company ended up losing and like losing the, oh, the license. Oh, that makes sense. With, uh, for Marvel. Because at so one point annoying. you could purchase characters. Mm. Like they was offering the characters, uh, extra downloadable characters you could purchase. Mm. But um, they they ended up taking it off. Yeah, uh, from off Xbox Live. Please stop. Um, <laughs> you know really what? No, you you just you just I'm, I'm a little oh, I just got baby. I'm a little mad right now because speaking of remakes and game remakes, oh, yeah. I just saw a freaking meme that I post on Facebook and it showed back when Star Wars was st was still with whatever company that was. It's like. Every year they had a hit game. Then they moved to EA, and all they had was two freaking poor remakes of Battlefront. Bruh. I will never, ever. You know how Wait, what long. What about the new Battlefront? The latest Battlefront? Yo, people were losing their minds over the new Battlefront. I'm going to punch you. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, dang. People were losing their minds over it. That was like two years ago, wasn't it? I don't know. It felt like yesterday because it still hurts. Oh, see, I'm not a. I didn't is, that the one, is that the one where um, you had the bad like the rest of the game? Yes. What? <laughs> yeah. What they they hamburgered at you? Oh. Got to pay for the cheese and the burger and the tomato the, and the lettuce. Yeah, yeah. It, I fucking I can't stand that. I'm sorry. Not to mention there was no space battles in Star Wars. What? How you gonna have? What? That's the one thing I don't like right now. About oh, oh, games, oh! Is also, the DLC. they didn't add any of the new levels from the new movies. Bro, 
Well, you're resonating with me because I'm still I'm still singing from Soul Calibur. I'm still singing. Like, y'all talking about, oh, we got 2B now. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> she's not even a real like, Soul Calibur I keep, character. I keep forgetting that she's on there I already. won't download it. I want the character. I feel the same way about Tekken 7. <laughs> Why do they keep doing this to us? Because people are... <sighs> people buy it, though. See, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be me. I don't want to be me. But there's a reason I have not bought a new console yet because oh, I'm right, not yeah. giving in to that You don't know it was one? Huh? You don't know Xbox One? It was given to me and I oh, still never got it working. <laughs> he just Actually, never can I, can I get that off of you? Eh, probably. Oh. Well, yeah, probably. Because I've really... Ew. Yo, like, if Kingdom Hearts GTA... does that to us where they're like, here's the game, but you got to buy it in sections in DLC, yes. I will... I don't know. I would cry first. Yeah. Like, what if they like... Here's Kingdom Hearts. We poured like 60 hours of gameplay, but in order to like, you have to uh, buy the first 20 hours and then the next 20 hours. Yeah, see. Oh, God, Grand I'm so Auto scared right now. Grand Theft Auto is the only game that I know of right now that's actually being very generous. I had to give it to Grand Theft Auto because they are doing way more than they, they probably even should, and I love them for it. But I mean, remember back in the day when that wasn't considered generous? That was considered a game? <sighs> Just getting that content? All of it at once. There you was know no DLC. You game people didn't appreciate enough? What? Saints Row. You know what? That yeah. game gave a lot, It's got too. like five games, doesn't it? The Warriors gave a lot. That, yeah. I'm gonna be playing that. Yeah. And then I saw the movie. I actually saw the game first and then the movie. Yeah, and I did hear some, what someone said on Family. You know, the game was actually better than the movie. It expanded on the story. I was like, that's yeah. really good. And it got next to no notice. Yeah, yeah, right. You, you know what's another people? game? That I'm scared of right now, but I really want to see do well. What? Resident Evil, the remake two. Resident Evil two, the remake. Oh, you so, know, Re- I'll be real. I've never really been that much of a fan of Resident Evil. Did the movies turn you off? I feel like the movies might have turned you <laughs> well, off. Well, no, because I definitely, I don't, I don't even remember. What, I don't remember which one. I, I always knew. All right, so let, people- let, let me confess one thing. As a horror fan, I don't do well with horror games. To be honest, they. Because you're involved in them personally, mm-hmm. and they make the situation so freaking hard, and I'm just scared to die in horror games, because it's not <laughs> fun when you die in horror games. It's just terrifying. The jump scare, I, I definitely agree with you on that. The jump scares, you feel them a lot. Like, ah, man, I remember just playing, like, Doom 3, like, back in the day. Oh, or actually, God. more recently, like, Resident Evil 7. Um, oh, dude! I did not want to move. Like I'm telling that. you, man, it's like <laughs> the closest thing to being in a haunted house is playing a horror video game, and you I guess see, that's a how really people, good one. That's how people feel when they be in the movies. Like people that don't like, like I love horror movies. They're like a magical adventure for me. <laughs> <laughs> magical, though. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not a horror movie fanatic. I'm really not. So oh, I yeah. mean, I love them. I like being scared. I like the jump scares and stuff. Because more often than not, I don't get scared. With a lot of the movies that come out nowadays. But a video game, no, a video game is just like more personal yep. than yeah. just sitting there you and watching to, something. Because you're already in the situation you're not even supposed to be in, yet you're playing into it. <laughs> and it's, it's Pretty sucks. much, yeah. I mean, Anna, you're, I mean, sorry, Mitty, Midnight, Mitty. White, the love of my life. <laughs> uh, yes. Wyman. That's me. <laughs> you're, you're into less plays, and you can agree that. Horror, uh, when when um, uh, streamers when they play horror games, that gets the most attention. It does. Uh, a lot of people. I watch a lot of horror YouTubers. I love them to death. Cause for me, it's like a secondhand experience. But no, you can ask them. I'm sometimes there and I get jump scared just as easily as they do. And it's like the situation gets really tense. I start getting anxious and sweaty a bit too. You know, one thing I will say it's about scary. horror games, <laughs> they are definitely. I get pretty sweaty. I get pretty sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. So, uh, one thing I could definitely say about horror video games, as a person who watches like all the, you know, all the horror movies, like I have no, like, all this of them. A majority of my movie collection. Like the one he just mentioned. Yep. And one thing I can say is many movies that have disturbed me is I still have made it through pretty much all of them. But video games, again, they're just a whole nother. I I, I, I take my hat. Well, well, I'm not going to take my hood off, but you, you get the <laughs> you get you get the idea. I, I really never honor people who can make it through horror games. I honestly don't know how they do it. The only one I've ever beat was two player. 
And I don't know if it was because it was two-player, but it, it just wasn't as scary. But, you know, on my own, it's like, because I want to I be respectful to the game and play it with the lights off at night. Oh, God. But <laughs> I can't play it with the lights off at night. It, it's, <laughs> I, I just can't do them. The position of being in the game, and the game's atmospheric. It makes you feel for, like, a moment. You're more than just the person holding the controller. So, Resident Silent Hill PT. Oh God, that was a co- that was a cult masterpiece for just being a demo. I'm really oh, sad that yeah, it wasn't right. more. And it, my man Neff over here tried to get me to play that. I could not do. I saw one thing twitching in the back, and I was like, I'm he done. He threw the controller at me and ran out the room. And I, hey, I ran. did not throw the controller at you. He I dropped placed it, it in, my in your lap okay. and got up and walked off the room. Yo, my nigga was speed. <laughs> I'm sorry, homie was speed walking. Uh, well, who, who? I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't know, my fault. Wow. <laughs> sorry. I was wondering who was going to be the first one. Damn, the one that curses like a sailor. <laughs> and of course, it yeah. wouldn't be me. Of course, it wouldn't be me. I'm, I'm going to just go over this. <laughs> we're playing, no, when we're playing Resident Evil Bi- 7, Biohazard. Like, when you're, I, I'm not spoiling anything, but I'm pretty sure at this point, a year or two later, year, oh, two, two. Yeah. Pretty sure you guys know that the you play as this guy who goes in this house and daddy's after you. That's just what you know the guy as, daddy. When he's chasing daddy's you around home. after the table and you gotta move from one room to the next, I hid in the corner. Neff was like, "You got, you gotta, we we gotta figure it out." I'm just hiding in the corner, like I don't want to leave this corner. And grandma, you remember looking at my grandma up at the staircase, and then yeah. you look back and grandma's not there, and, and just grandma's like, grandma's gone, yeah. But she in a she wheelchair. Watching you. Yeah. Yo. Oh my goodness, yeah, we got. We gotta get back and we gotta we gotta do that. Game. We gotta Before play it. Gonna, um, cause we we want to start doing. Um, let's play videos too. Yeah, uh, horror let's plays, Kingdom Hearts, because Resident Evil Two Remake, the one shot, the actual game is coming out now, so it's like, I'm very curious. Like this one shot demo has been doing really well. Yo, Neff is really creeping me out right now. What is <laughs> look, he's got his ice cube scowl. <laughs> yeah, it looks like ice cube. Sorry, um, we had like some some um, problems with audio, uh, so while we was fixing everything up. Uh, we took like well, I took like a bathroom break, and now I can't get comfortable. Like, <laughs> oh, I, like I was like, I w- it was perfect the way like whatever it was one before. butt cheek was on <laughs> the couch, and the other one was on the on the ottoman, and it was it was <laughs> it was perfect. Now now it just sucks. See, and I Sorry. was gonna keep talking, but he wouldn't <laughs> continue, stop looking, so I was like a little nervous. I just got like really angry at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it was perfect. It was perfect. Yep, they have the one-shot demo that came out, and you can play for about 30 minutes, and that's it. You have 30 minutes to play the game, get to a certain point, and it's, you know, it's with Leon and Claire. And I love Resident Evil. I played it for... Um, oh, did you play it? I Is didn't it play still it out? One shot. Yeah, it's still out, the one-shot. And I think the game drops itself on... Oh, did the game drop already on the 19th? I'm not sure. Oh, no, it dropped on the 25th. On the 25th? Let's, yeah. let's do it. Let's let's play the Dude, little one-shot de- demo and... Uh, Post it on the channel. Yeah, yes, let's do it. You gotta play with us. I mean, for the most part, it's, it's you know it's a one player, but I mean the. Oh, w- I thought it was two players. No, so Resident Evil Two, yes, it, it introduced the mechanic of playing as the two different people, and then they okay. themselves like the story switches between them. But the demo, the demo is just one player. Yeah, it doesn't have the the de- yeah the demo is one player because you're playing you know as what's Leon. Better than one, than two I mean, player? I'm down for one player, but I like playing with friends. It helps the experience. Yeah. What's All that? I'm saying is Raccoon City. I know I'm the only person that likes that game, but I'm just saying. No, he, I when, when, actually enjoyed when, it because I like being the demolitionist. When Midnight first bought Raccoon City and she showed me, I was like, this is dope. This is something we need to get everybody into. And then the next thing I hear, Jamal beat the game. I'm like, <laughs> what? I wanted MBC. this was supposed to be in our game. I this wait for no one. He right. really did beat it. He didn't. He didn't. I, but you know I, what? I want like a, like a more updated version too, like um, Raccoon City Two. That would be dope. What was that game called that we really liked? It was also for the. It was for Xbox, though I think. Something with the Reckoning. Oh, Hunter. Hunter. Yeah, yeah. I miss those. I get that it was, now. That was fun. That Zombie was fun survival game. horror games aren't the biggest anymore. We had a lot of them in the late '90s, early 2000s. Going yeah, into Left 2000s. For Dead. Yeah, that Left 4 Dead. Um, yeah. Silent, he- Silent Hill wasn't a zombie game. It was a survival game. Yeah, they Silent were monster Hill was zombie weird. things. They were from your mind, so. Yeah, that was that was weird. But I, I, I still wanted Hill. to see the new Silent Hill game. I wasn't, well, at least Allison, 
Alex Allison Walken Waken. Oh, um, Allison Road. Allison Road. Yeah. Was that yeah. canceled? I don't know. I haven't heard anything of it since. Like he just the the developer just stopped talking about it. Uh, as far as I know, they never obtained the um the funding for it. Oh, that's one of the sad part is is like you have this really cool concept, but it's money, and you know, you either throw too much money at something that's not good, or they don't throw enough money at something that is good. Uh, that's like the biggest thing. Hollywood. Yeah. We don't think people will like this. Whoa, 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 whoa. What if we do like it? People like Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. Um, you ain't know that. Nope, is. I don't, but I have known the title, but as far as <laughs> Wait, watching. people no. like what? Wait, I was, I'm just going to call Trouble in Little China. Um, wasn't that with Jackie Chan? <sighs> <laughs> well, it sounds like an Asian movie was. <laughs> Was Jackie Chan? Oh, oh, it's not. No, no, no. Wait, hold on. That's the one made by uh 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 your your guy, Wes. No, 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 not him. The other director. Um, um. He's aiming a bow at his head. He was. He was. Uh, a really long bow. He's one of Robert Rodriguez's favorite directors, and he had him on his show, on that channel. Neff is really trying here. Um. Right. That shows the that, that shows the, the the wrestling, El Ray, right? He was on El Ray. He's saying yes. Okay, but the and his name is relaxed. Carpenter, John Carpenter. I think no. I really want you know what. <laughs> <laughs> Cle- clearly, I have not done my job as a film buff <laughs> among these freaking <laughs> culture cretins. <laughs> ah, why was that so hard for you? Wait, I was right. Yes, you were right. Oh, oh you goodness. did it. Yay. <laughs> but you almost messed up twice. Yeah. You almost messed up. You, you were really, really, you put him on a hot spot there. Oh, yeah, he was, he was on the board. <laughs> like, if he was at, like, those uh, dunking boots where you I'm get to so drop him into, like, right pit of acid, yo, oh, you yeah, survived you, the pit. Yeah, I was about to treat you like that dude treated that cartoon boot in Roger Rabbit. What? Oh, the, oh God. Oh, the boot from Ro- the sneaker. Yeah. From Roger <laughs> Rabbit. Yo, so, that part was pretty morbid. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, for for those that don't know, you can thank Big Trouble and Little China and John Carpenter for raiding in Mortal Kombat. In <gasps> fact, you can also thank John Carpenter for Solid Snake. Just what? watch Escape from New York. Hmm. Yeah, he was dope. He was yeah. dope. That's another remake that hasn't. I think that solid. I think that the Metal Gear Solid genre oh, oh, is all oh. rightish. I actually never played any of their games I, I did play but i wasn't an avid fan like it didn't make me like a diehard okay <laughs> i love solid snake um awesome awesome solid awesome. oh yeah uh, middle gear awesome, awesome snake? yes by metal eagle raptor yes, Yo, i love yes. everything eagle raptor <laughs> eagle raptor Ingram. was dope man shout like out to new grounds new grounds still exist they still yeah. exist you know what yeah. i kind of want new grounds to come back now that's a that's a Something that I want to see resurface yeah. with the fall of like Tumblr. The young kids, they don't they don't know anything about Newgrounds. Flash games, flash animated cartoons, movies. I learned about Newgrounds yeah. in Comics. middle school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah, it was it like, was Newgrounds pretty. Newgrounds was dope. Mike. And they're still there. Dude, me madness. I remember me and me and my friends. Um, we always wanted to create a flash animation and put it on Newgrounds. Yeah, I still want it. We never did. No, but I mean, I think Flash is being like put out though. Like, yeah, I don't think there's any more Adobe CC. No, what it's it's called Flash it used to be CC. A, it, no, it used to be um, Flash it used Adobe to be Flash. Flash, but then they changed it to um, Animate. Yes, they Adobe made it to Animate. animate yeah. CC. yeah, I don't know what's happening to it at the moment, but a lot of people don't like it right now. I think they're making you charge mm. for everything like monthly, kind of like how. For Microsoft Word, Microsoft Office does it. Yeah, that's how it is for Adobe now. You yeah. have to, um, you can do a subscription, which I don't understand because it's like, well, does the subscription stop when I finish paying for it? Because these used to have like a, like it still has like that that value where it's like a thousand dollars or whatnot. But it's like, do I just infinitely pay this every month to use it? As long as I'm using it, like yeah, forever. So, to you, right? I don't know. Do I just uh, anyone listening? Let us know. Like update. I mean, we can check it out. We're just. I mean, but I mean, if you're listening I, and I you want to participate, I just don't want to. <laughs> Let's make this a social thing. <laughs> yeah, talk to yeah, us. Yeah, we're we're bringing please. you into this. Please. please so, talk to um, us. all the way into your normal. Y'all hear that noise? What's that noise? 
that noise means that we're going into the other session section of our podcast Ooh, where we talk about you know uh art creative yeah. stuff yeah our art well, yes. our creative creative stuff. creativity I didn't anything. yeah i'm gonna insert like a sound bite um so in it's episode two pretending. of artist wife and writer husband and it made like a weird growl oh like it was like girl. Well, I, I could have made the girl and, well no well, we're gonna insert it we're gonna insert you're that gonna growl. use that gonna take dude come on that growl from the beginning of episode two go go to it and listen to it it's like in the first seconds and she she sounds like <laughs> girl and, and that's going to be when you hear that noise like that's going to be like okay we're on a different topic now <laughs> wow well wow I wow like it. I so what's like our it. new topic Neff? did you did you see like the edit i did for her video no Neff, what's the new topic <laughs> i think i did i yeah. hate both okay of so the the topic we're going to be talking about today oh is, you want to talk about hate is no nope. is <laughs> It's not going to be hate. The topic we're talking about today <laughs> is going to be uh, dreaming big. Ooh. Like, why is it why is it important to dream big? Yeah, and and not going after just uh, low hanging fruit. Yes. Why didn't you say it? Because I don't know how say to it. no. I s- say my it. accent. <laughs> say it with your Alabama accent. Wait, you say it. Fruit. Fruit. No, you just copy me when I say it. No. He says, oh, I can't do it now because he's already said it. Dag. That's not how he says it. What? <laughs> Sorry. What was that? <laughs> the she monsters from, well, it wasn't exactly, but the she monsters from um, Big Lips? What, what, what was that? Was that show? Oh, God. Big I, Mouth? Big Mouth, Big, big Lips. Big Lips? Oh. <laughs> That was a really weird show to watch. I think it has a second season. It does, yeah. Everyone likes it. I I watched it too, and I felt strange about it. Apparently, uh, you know what I'm gonna say ain't even relevant. Screw it. All right, we'll come back to it <laughs> out, out, after hours. Wait, was it concerning Big Mouth? Or? Well, yeah. So, well, okay. So we could come back to it. <sighs> it, it doesn't matter. I want to talk about the low hanging fruit. I want to get some candy. I yeah, I want to. I want to show Jamal this video. What? Right quick. Video. Well, he's going to get some candy. I don't even know. He didn't even offer me any candy. You know? But well, I don't I need was, candy. I was going to bring it over there. She don't oh, need was, candy. She hasn't had anything today. I haven't. I'm a little hungry. I mean, I had coffee. That's not food. Uh, that's, whoa, <laughs> how dare you? You're right. They don't serve no used food. <laughs> Ew, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a it's an inside joke. I uh, but leave. yeah, Anna, tell us about why it's important to dream big. So... One of the main things as a creator that I've struggled with for years was, hey, I want to make my own comic. And then I would go, and that would be my goal, is to make my own comic. And for years, I told myself, mejor que nada, better than nothing. Make this comic is better than not having a comic. And I did that. I, I made a comic. And then I made another comic. And then I didn't like my old comic, so I made another comic. And I made comics. And then I sat there like, oh, shoot, I don't know what to do. So then I was like, okay, I have these comics. I made them. They're old from middle school, high school. I made these comics. I had these stories, these ideas. Um, uh, Well, what's the next thing I want? And so I was like, okay, I want to be a a comic book artist. I want people to hire me for my works. I want people to, I, I want people to buy my comics. I want to be hired to make comics. I, I want to go into the industry. So then my next big, dr- my my actual big dream was to enter the comic book industry. And I had no idea how to go about that. So I kept doing the same thing I was doing. I made comics. And I made connections, though, with other people who wanted to make comics. And I think that's the one thing that started making my dream a reality was that I made, I decided to establish a bigger picture. Outside of what I wanted to do, I realized that there was connections that had to be made in order to get to the where I wanted to go. But first I had to figure out, did I want to go somewhere? And that's the dreaming big. Where do you want to go? Do you see yourself doing more than just what you're doing? Or is there a world that you want to enter into? Because it's easy for creators to slip into our own worlds and stay there. Mm -hmm. But what do you want to do besides stay in your own world? Do you want to connect to other people's worlds? Do you want people let, let people into your world? 
What's your big dream at the end of this? So, yeah, when it comes to big ideas, um, one thing I can say, you know, in a, in, a, in a strange way, you have to look beyond yourself but not get ahead of yourself. There's a lot of projects I've done that I had never done before artistically. And, like, just, just a couple of years ago, I actually built my own canvas for the first time. It was 72 by 48. I bought the wood, cut the wood from Home Depot, bought canvas uh, from Hobby Lobby. Literally walked, as you went to Hobby Lobby first, walked from Hobby Lobby carrying this big old thing of canvas to Home Depot to build this canvas and did the painting all in one night. It still resides on my wall, needing to be sold. And the thing about that, I, again, this is something I had never done I'm gonna, before. I'm going to actually show a picture of that, like in the video. Um, it's beautiful. Thank you. And, and definitely, I want to, like, I know that's like a hard story for you, but <laughs> me being your friend, I'm going to force you to talk about it. Oh. And I'm going to use it as content for this channel. So, heads up. Okay. <laughs> but that's going <laughs> to that's, <laughs> that's gonna be for another video. But yeah, not to, not yeah. to cut you off. <laughs> okay, no problem. But yeah, like, you know, and that's just one of the crazy things I decided to do. Like, I've, I've made, for, for films, I've made, um, practical, well, I'm not going to say practical effects, but I've made costumes, very detailed costumes for creature effects. Something else I'm not at all trained to do, but my experience making masks and other things have led me to it. And the, the thing about it is that you, at the end of the day, you can't be intimidated by the work that goes into something, and you can't be intimidated on your own so-called limitations. I say so-called limitations because you're limited until you pass that limitation. <laughs> That's the thing about it. There yeah. is no such thing as a limit. You can only limit yourself yeah, exactly. until you've done something past that limit. You're like, oh, okay, now I've done this. I can go further. Yeah. And that's literally with any and all things. I'm to the point now where I literally do literally whatever I think to do, uh, to be honest. it's um I actually bought materials today to make my own easel. Because, you know, buying one is freaking expensive for something that's just going to stand in one place all its life. And then you might end up with a cheap one, and that sucks. I've had too many cheap easels. Yeah. I hate that so much. So, um, so the thing, thing about, like, dreaming big is, you know, um, what? It only, it only make you know, if you're going to dream at all, you might as well dream big. You, you know, I'm trying my best not to be repetitive here, but it, it it's that simple but it's also obviously um hard because depending on the people you have around you the yeah your personal your insecurities group. you know all yeah. these things can play a part in it because sometimes and that's why they say you don't tell people your dreams because they if they're not dream if they can't dream big they're not going to see how your dreams are possible <laughs> yeah i'm yeah in that sense you also can't get you also have to understand that you People are not going to get excited for your dream. This mm -hmm. is your dream for that reason, for you to get excited about. And they might get excited, but they won't stay excited. Yeah. You can't expect that from everybody. Yeah. Or from, you know. uh, they can never actually know what you're dreaming. I guess that that's the too. best way to put it. You, you can describe it. Because they can't it. see the vision like you can see it yeah. Yeah. and whatnot and feel it. It's also good to always have those people that support you, of mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the things that you do. But... Only you can get excited for your dreams. And that's another thing. You got to be your own hype man, hype woman. And, and, and then, well, and that's yeah. the other thing. You know, <laughs> never expect people to support you either. Because at the end of the day, once you do what you plan to do or want to do, then your support will come in. It, it, you know, you... Yeah. I'm not going to say you don't... You, you, Expectations you, are limited. Yeah. The moment you put an expectation on anything, you're limiting yourself from reaching your whatever potential, and you're possibly limiting the space around you and the people around you. If you put them into this square of expectation, if you put yourself in the square of expectation, then you're not allowing yourself or anybody else to exceed past that. Yeah. And then if they go lower than your expectation, it's just, it's a lose-lose, honestly. Yeah. Uh, it... You can have boundaries for yourself, for like, but I feel like boundaries also are like a defense mechanism. I feel like it's not the people that you know that's going to 
drive you to stardom, you know, yeah. or to fame or whatever you want. It's going to be the people that you don't know, the yeah. people that have yet to learn about you. And so the reason why I wanted to bring up this topic uh, for this episode was because um, when I first started out with H&H, uh, Heaven and Hell Studios, oh, Heaven and Hell. we was dreaming big. We was dreaming big. Though we didn't really know a lot. We didn't know a lot at the time. And it was definitely a learning experience. Mm -hmm. But that kind of scarred me in a way where I stopped dreaming big. I stopped looking ahead. And so when it came time to do our that first comic that we did with uh, Darren, Darren Soto. Amazing artist. Amazing artist. When the comic was finally said and done... I was like, now what? I was just so focused on that low hanging, you know, that low hanging fruit of just printing out a comic. Right. And to tell a lot of people, honestly, that's the easiest thing to do. Uh, we have another friend, um, uh, Kesha, Kesha Glass. And I like that pet name a lot. Yeah. That's a pretty <laughs> it's, badass it's pretty pet dope. name. Yeah. Like, oh, you're going to hear, like, I, for me as a, as a, like, a, out of it reader, like if I pick that up, I'll be like, oh, she's gonna write like the best stories. <laughs> I gotta grab this. Right. <laughs> so so her thing is, you know, printing a book. And it's like, you know, like that can be done. That's easy. Like that's in this day and age, like you don't need to find a publisher to be able to print a book. Yeah. You know, self publishing is a thing and it's very easy to get done. So what are you gonna do after that? And so when we created the comic, I was literally like, what next? Um, I mean, I had an idea. It was to, you know, um, give out, basically just to give the books out to try to build a fan base. Through, Mind um, you, we paid money to have them printed, too. Yeah, through uh, on free comic book day. But it actually, um, I was having car problems. So the event that we was uh, invited to, oh, yeah. where I was going to give the comic books out, I couldn't go to. I had no form of transportation, and it really wasn't a time where Uber and Lyft was popping like that. It wasn't, yeah. So wow, that was just like, or at least not in our area. Yeah. So that was pretty hard. That was like a pretty hard hit because I had all these copies of comic books, and like I didn't know how to go further than that, and whatnot. You you know what I'm saying? Mm. Also, I didn't have um a mentor either that probably could have helped me it's also important to have a mentor yeah no that's that's important is to when you're coming out of your space seeking others that are in the space you want to be in you have to learn from other people you can't just do it on your own get it on your yeah. own there's no such thing there's no man is an island yeah. yeah, having a mentor in the field, whether it's just someone you've never talked to, like in person, but you just talk online, mm -hmm. that's so critical in any field. Yeah, I remember uh, MDC. You was telling me how you, when you was going to uh, the art institute for for film, that it took your professor taking you out onto a film set to realize like a lot of the stuff that they was teaching you in school really wasn't accountable. Like, yeah, in the actual film world. Yeah. It, oh, man. that That's a... I can honestly say that's the reason why I stopped doing good at AI, to be honest, because it, it was one of those sort of... Besides the fact that AI has a lot of issues. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also true. But it was, it was basically <laughs> an eye-opening experience because not only did I get real field experience on an actual film set, and I, I got so connected with people... Um, to the point I was getting contacted from even out of town. I had been on so many film sets. But then even students I got really close to, they had learned to do a lot of things on their own through the Internet. And they had their own equipment. And I was thinking, wait a minute, why am I even going here? <laughs> you know? That's another thing. And in, in fairness, I'm not, again, I don't regret because I, you know, I had to learn that. You know, it was kind of a... Just like the, the painting, Aronson wants me to... I'm um, sorry, Neff wants me to speak of... <laughs> Late, on the later episode, it was another really kind of sharp in learning experience. It's like, I'm glad it happened. It kind of hurt, but I'm glad it happened. Um, boy, there's a lot of learning experience I could point out. But one thing I can say is that 
you know, that's also the point of really. That's yeah, all. Yeah. That also goes into like not limiting yourself because right. the whole reason I even ended up on 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 my professor's films because the semester had ended and I told him I do not want to go on a break without filming and that's when he invited me i was one of the only two students in any of his classes that was on set wow and the other one stopped showing up eventually so it was just me to the point where eventually he gave me a a computer to work on and then trusted me with a lot of duties yo that's really important putting yourself continuously out there continuing to put yourself in a place where i need this experience and you're, you're you're chasing it and and that being and proactive. I, and I want to add on that because that's another thing about I think I've said before, probably in the first episode, like you need purpose. And even and when I say that, not just in general of the whole of your entire dream, but you need purpose in every step too. Like when you go yeah, to specific conventions, specific parties, specific when you go to talk to specific people, we go you know every thing, every step has to have a specific purpose to your next step. Yeah, so when you dream big, those steps um, subconsciously, like, like where you're not even thinking about it, like... It just, it's natural. It feels natural. Yeah, it just feels natural because you, you're moving in that direction. Like, when you made it your... When you, when you made it your purpose, like, it's nice to have a vision, but when you make it your purpose, like, this is what I want out of life, you're going to start to move towards that you want to start moving towards that so then so that's why i said you want to go for that you want to dream big like like i want like instead of just saying i just want to print you know one comic book you know i started saying like i want to be the one of the best comic book writers you know i want to see my stuff um merchant merchandised Mm -hmm. and whatnot yeah and i don't know how i'm gonna do it but i don't feel like that's not me thinking realistically i mean i think it's realistic because you have People that's done it before. Mm-hmm. So if other people can do it, I know I can do it. And even still, and sometimes you, you got to think outside. Because, I mean, when you look at people like, what, the Wright brothers, no one could fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they you would have people saying like, oh, stuff. no, what, what do you mean, a man flying? You're, you're, you're not being realistic. So you kind of have to, like, drop the the realism of what's possible and like you said don't don't limit yourself yeah just just dream and like, and you know and just collect information in any angle you know just because you're a comic artist doesn't mean you can't read novels doesn't mean you can't study history doesn't please mean you can't read you know <laughs> yeah pull there's so many people and i still i still love them because i i love the the just the energy and stuff that they have but i've met a lot of writers who um, are I guess you can call them mangakas. They don't necessarily draw their own yeah. um, stories, but you know they write it mm-hmm. and whatnot, and they pull from so many uh, anime influences. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you kind of bubble yourself because yeah. you start to imitate those anime that influence you. Yeah, like no one's saying go and read the uh, biography of. Uh Abraham Lincoln, and you can be a better mangaka. No I mean, one's who, saying who, that particularly, but, but that doesn't knows? mean you like, shouldn't read it. Reading that biography, it. something might like appeal to you, and you can use that for character development. I later. mean, we really like. Let, let, let me tell you something. <laughs> that Vampire <laughs> Slayer movie. As a matter that of fact, that was pretty badass. Let me let me tell you something. It's it's so funny that just got brought. Cause so, so last night I was watching. <laughs> so actually, last night I was watching two of my favorite pastimes. One was Deadliest Warrior. And oh, cool. the Did other, they bring it back? Well, no, I was watching reruns like I always do because I'm sad and lonely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh, you no. are pretty sad. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not lonely. We're here with you. <sighs> so but anyway. We are leaving eventually. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I got Major Tom. It don't matter. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I was Shout watching. Major Tom. <laughs> Ground Control. So, um, so, yes, I was watching Dillard's Warrior, which... Uh, gave me the idea, hey, why don't I watch um, Warriors with Terry Shepard, which was a History Channel show that no one knew about, actually. It was only one season. But this guy who was, a, um, I think he's a Navy SEAL, he went to go study. He had a show about studying like ancient warriors, like the Mayans, the Zulu, Samurai, etc., etc. So, and he really gets, he always focuses on one particular warrior in a decisive battle in each episode. 
So I watched the Samurai one last night when he started to talk about Miyamoto Musashi. And, you know, considered like the greatest samurai, if not one of the greatest samurai ever. Mm -hmm. So, and now do realize I've seen this episode a dozen times. Like, so it's nothing new to me. However, I must have been in some sort of mind state last night because there were certain things that I really pulled focus on that really kind of got into my mind because... He was talking about how the thing, the, what made Musashi great is that he was such an original. He didn't follow samurai tradition. You know, he didn't keep the samurai cut. He was, his clothes were shaggy. He was like almost like the anti-samurai in a sense. But that's what made him great. He actually killed his final opponent with a wood sword. That's pretty, and I'm gonna tell y'all just badass. I'm not gonna get too much into that right now because you know it's a long story, or whatever. So look it up on your own time. <laughs> but what I will say is that watching that episode again, and I've been and I've been really like kind of studying like ancient warfare and ancient warriors or whatnot. And the thing that I find really interesting about a lot of these ancient warriors, especially these standouts, is that not only were they just different mentally, but they accomplished things because they really put their mind and focus onto their one true purpose. And and that and that's what I mean with like pulling inspiration from everything. You know, I'm not a soldier. I've never been in the military. I'm obviously not a warrior in ancient times, but it does make me look at my own life in perspective because, you know, you're talking about someone that literally faces death with open arms. And it's like, I'm not even really facing death in my career. I'm just facing anxiety. Just sitting at a computer desk, just editing videos. Click. Yeah, you know, click, and click. it's and you have to ask yourself, it's like exactly <laughs> what on earth are you afraid of exactly? Yeah, new and, perspectives are extremely important for being a creative in general. Yeah. If you're stuck in a creative bubble, you need to get out your bubble and find another perspective or create a new perspective. And do realize, you know, he's known for being a samurai, but he also wrote a, he also wrote books. He was also a poet. He was also an artist. So, yeah. and he accomplished a lot in his time, and you can accomplish a lot in your time. Yeah, imagine if an ancient person, uh, if someone from ancient history can do this, why can't you branch out well, as well? Well, there's, there's actual reasons for that, because our, I didn't mean it that way, because modern time and ancient time are really different, because back then, Very. his specific life, anyway. <laughs> but, but I get what you're saying, It's though. encouraging, it's, or it's yeah, inspiring, though, yeah, in a sense. Yeah, you... You can find inspiration from... You know, like life is... Here's the thing. Like life is different for everyone in different time periods. I'm not going to say that you can be Teddy if Roosevelt. If you can do it then, they, if they can do it then, you can do it now. you do have to ask yourself <laughs> at times, it's like, well, are you really valuing your time? It's like, even if you're That's not doing something, yeah. you could be reading, you could be processing your thoughts. Go for a walk. Um, just sketch out something, whatever it is you do. There's a hundred ways to be inspired, and that's the thing about, like, look as a film... Look up researchers, look up references, uh, reference everything. Yeah, and as a filmmaker, see, the thing about filmmaking, especially for every film you do on your topic, you have to research. That's just part of it. You have to be everything from a, a war general to a babysitter on set. You know, you have that's to do... You have to grow so many skills. You have to be a psychologist, a policeman at times, you have to be so many things when you make a movie. So, and so you just can't, I just, you just can't watch movies and think you you can make movies. You have to watch movies and gain other ideas and experience so you can make a movie and also stand out. Yeah, and then there's, mm. there's also like two ways to watch in a movie too. There's like watching the movie has like a movie goer, how, you know, normally people watch, but then it's like when you're in that mindset of like a director and whatnot, you're actually, it's different. It's a different experience. You're oh, looking yeah. at like the angles, you're looking at the composition, you're looking at like a lot of stuff. The flow, the pace, storytelling, the, color The theory. dialogue, all, all yeah. of that stuff. When I watch a movie, I watch the like, colors. you're questioning like, why did they take this direction from all of it? That's, I remember uh, MDC telling me, uh, that's probably why the, the DC films suck. <laughs> because <laughs> like they they were just filmed kind of bad. Like, the, and, Suicide and that, Squad was not. Dude, was it, not good. I think one of my cinematography friends actually pointed that out. He's like, you know, I think the reason why I consider those movies so bad is because uh, the cinematography isn't good. And I, and it hit me. I was like, you know what? I cannot remember. A, a, there's only literally like one single shot out of the DCEU movies I consider memorable. What's that? 
that was when Superman was kind of like dazed in space on um oh. Donna Justice. Only image. The okay. only image. Not even Didn't the... they pull that from off of the Avengers, though? With Iron, Iron Man, Man in exploding space? Floating in Ten... space like uh, well, he position. wasn't floating, was he? Yeah, he, he was floating. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Well, floating well, and falling, but more so floating. Being in space, because it's like... I don't, know, I don't remember that. I, I was trying to give DC some because I'm pretty sure they came from the <laughs> comics, but I don't know. See, for me, one of the most iconic scenes, as someone who I'm not a, the biggest movie buff, but I do watch it from both standpoints, was the Wonder Woman scene on the beach, and she was blocking the, the bullets. Mm. I liked it. I felt like that. that's the one scene that stands out. If you ask me anything else from the movie, also I'm biased. I love Wonder Woman. <laughs> but honestly, if you ask me anything else from the movie, I'd have to sit here and think for a bit. But that one scene is the first one that comes to my head. Because I can also say, dynamic. there's a lot of shots in the Marvel movies I could point out. There's shots in Dark Knight, I, ooh, especially yeah. Dark Knight, I could yeah. point out. There, it's like o- almost, I'm not going to say every other superhero movie, but there's a lot of shots that are very memorable. And that's one thing that's important about movies. Again, I'm not trying not to get too much in the movies, but shots <laughs> are a big important thing. So when you watch a movie that doesn't have very memorable shots, you know, it, it's, it's a waste. No, you could tie that into anime. You could tie that yeah. into cartoon movies. Comics. You can tie that into comics with important shots. You can tie that into um. Oh yeah, yeah. You could tie that into uh. That was weird. To to video games. Yeah, actually, it, yes. It, the can. camera angle can throw off the whole mood because of the game. Because you know the thing about it. At the end of the day, it goes back to artwork. If you look at Renaissance art, if you look at any type of oh, artwork, yeah. it portrays the image, a moment. A sensation. What and are you feeling? Everything in our modern world has picked up from those traditions. So anything that doesn't do that is honestly wasting its craft and possibilities. Yes. It's like why would why why would a movie not want to be memorable? Why right. would a comic book not want to be memorable? Why would anything not want to be memorable? At the end of the day, if you think of humans humanity to the core, it comes down to memory. It comes down to being remembered. That's why, you know, ancient people built pyramids and statues and structures. That's why history is so important. It's about being remembered. They did all those things with intent. Everything that's memorable has intent. It has an impression. It has a purpose. Whatever purpose later on that we assign to it, originally there's a creator with intent or purpose. So to sort of wrap it up, I want to say, imagine this giant, okay, are there any Disney fans? Pocahontas? Remember in the song uh, and the sycamore tree? And it was like they cut to the shot, Disney, animated movies, cinematography, oh, Disney. So they went to the shot, uh, Pocahontas singing to John Smith, and it's just the giant sycamore tree. You know, she says, if you cut it down, will you ever know? But the whole point is that sycamore tree, they can grow really tall. Now imagine Mm -hmm. your, whatever you want to create, whether it's writing books, whatever it's creating film, whatever it's drawing a comic, a manga, whether it's um, being a model, whether it's uh, cooking or sewing or whatever is your dream. It doesn't have to fall into that field. It could be anything. Whatever your dream is, imagine it's that entire giant tree, and you have to climb it. At the very top is where you want to be, or is, but you have no idea how to get there. You should dream at being at the top. When we say dream big, we don't mean uh, sitting at the bottom of the tree, and we don't mean maybe grabbing that branch over there and just settling there. When we say, when I particularly say dream big, I mean being right at the top. You feel like you touch the sky. You're not, you know, whatever that comfortable nook up there. But you have no, there are no handholds. The branches start up 20 feet high. You can reach for those those low hanging fruit on that uh, that 20 foot branch. If you get a ladder, you know, you get the tools and you prop, you get the basic tools. You get a ladder. You prop yourself up. You can grab that low hanging fruit, or you can grab that branch. And you can grab the next branch. Climb the trunk, make your way up. You can climb. You can. Your hands are going to get bruised. Your legs and your knees are going to get scuffed up. You might fall down a branch or two. I've yeah. done that. Fallen, I've fallen off plenty of trees as a kid. It hurts. All the way to the bottom. But it didn't stop me from climbing trees. Well, I don't climb trees anymore. But I didn't stop as a kid. But the analogy being, there's that low-hanging fruit, and it probably tastes sweet. You know, it probably tastes great. The branch, The fruit on the next branch probably tastes sweet. But imagine all the fruits that are yours for the picking right at the top. You, you gotta, you gotta get those calluses on your hands. You gotta get those knees scuffed up. You gotta, you gotta have to fall. Clothes ripped. You got your clothes are gonna get ripped. But when you get to the top, you're gonna finally be where you are. And guess what? 
climb the next tree. And you know what? Sometimes you might have to drop some dead weight, too. Yeah. Mm. Hey, you might lose some weight while you're up there. <laughs> That's it. Well, yeah, there you go. Yeah. If your dream is that 100-foot sycamore, if your dream is just climbing to the top of, oh, God, Mount Everest, start start off, get some gear. You're going to need gear. Gear is a, a tutor, a mentor. Gear is resources, internet, research. Gear is yep. whatever you need. But get it and climb. Because... I mean, we all got to climb something, right? Yep. That's true. That's wow. What hill are you willing to die on? <laughs> Not <a> plane. <laughs> That's a, you want to die Well, on. before you said that, that was like <laughs> I had to go the, the perfect, you know, ending for this episode. Um, yeah, there's really nothing more I wanted to add to that. Yay, I did it. Um, what about you, MDC? Um, I'm just waiting for this persecution in the other video. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, yeah, um, for those who are still listening, thank you. We really appreciate it. Um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, we love reading the this comments. This is like our first Yo, time mentioning this. Thank you for commenting. Please oh subscribe. My God. Yeah, we had our first comment the other you, day, yeah. and they were really dope. I'm like, still too emotional right now, so. Like, thank you. Thank yeah, you for thanks, listening. man. And, you know, like, share. Thank you for sharing. Yo, Thank you for sharing. Yeah, for everyone. That means a lot everyone to us. that yeah. shares, thank you. We, thank we, you. We this really, is for you really guys. We appreciate it. We want to bring, you know, more talent onto the show. We're trying to figure out, like, the best way how yeah. to do it because we kind of want to incorporate video. Um, but, yeah, thanks to everyone that's listening. Thanks, uh, y'all. We're signing off. Yep. Until next time. Thanks for listening. Artist wife. Writer husband. Uh, and, and MDC. <laughs> we out. <laughs> Laters.